in CanOpen, the service data object is a protocol that implements point-to-point -point communication, and it's always a um, request and response. So there's a manager or a diagnostic system that wants to check which nodes are connected and communicate with each device individually. So there's a assigned SDO channel. We need read and write access to the object dictionary of the node. And it's a confirmed communication mode. So once the request is out, we either get a response or we produce a timeout ourselves. A single pair of request and response is good for up to four bytes of data. If the data gets bigger, then we start segmentation or a block transfer mode, and that supports any data size. So literally code updates, table updates, or even larger portions of data can be transferred. In CanOpen, every node connected to the network must implement one default SDO server. So it serves its own object dictionary to the network and an SDO client can request from the server to read or write data. Now the default usage for all SDO clients is that a single CanOpen manager owns all of these SDO channels, so only that single device can initiate uh, SDO requests. There can be deviations from the default implementation of the SDO client. The SDO client service could be passed on to other devices or additional SDO clients and servers could be implemented. However, these are only available in certain customization environments and are not straightforward to use. Looking at the messages exchanged, we have the SDO client transmitting the SDO request with the data read or write request, and the server must reply. So it either issues the appropriate SDO response, or if the data requested is not available, or it's, there's some other error with the request, it needs to transmit an SDO abort. If there's no SDO response or abort from the SDO server, then after the response timeout, the SDO client must transmit an SDO abort of its own, a timeout in this case, and this informs everybody else that the transfer failed. The CAN ID used by the SDO communication directly tells us to which or from which node the transfer is made, because the master or diagnostics tool when sending the SDO request uses a CAN ID of 600 hex plus the node ID. And the response always comes back with the CAN ID 580 plus node ID. So in our example here, if we see a CAN ID of 582, then we know, oh, this is what node 2 transmitted in response to an SDO request. I'm now using CanOpenMagic to show you a few SDO transfers. So we have a simulated node number three running and we want to access it. So add read from node. I'm selecting node number three. And the default here is uh, the device type entry at object 1000. So let's execute that. I'll click on read. And down here in the trace, we can see the transfer. There's a 603 message the request to read and the 583 is the response and the value we are reading back is decimal 401 so this is a generic io cia 401 document the raw can message is here in the end so there's two can messages with uh, eight bytes each with the request and the response in the sdo format so this was an expedited read request. Now let's also do a write request. To do a write request, I'll do add write to node. Again, select node number three. And one of the values that one can write is, for example, the heartbeat time. So the producer heartbeat time, select that, 1017. It's an unsigned 16 value, and I'll write here the value 1000. 
this is 1000 milliseconds so do a write and now I have to press stop here for the trace recording because right after the transfer of the SDO request and the SDO response there's the value here with 1000 written to sub index 0 at index 1017 and right after we wrote it the heartbeat starts with 703 the heartbeat message and one second in between those let's set it back to zero so that we don't have the heartbeat here i'll do a clean start and now let's do read of a segmented entry and for that we choose um, the manufacturer device name so at 1008 we have a manufacturer device name if we read that then we can now see the text in here is micro can open demo dynamic PDO and uh, in our trace we can see the requests involved actually I need to make this a little bigger so we see now this is a segmented transfer so there was first the initial request that we want to read it then the response was oh this is fragmented so 25 bytes and after the initial response that there's 25 bytes to come there's always an exchange of one request and one response and with each response we get the next seven bytes of the message until here at the end it says oh, this is the last segment nothing else to follow and we get the last portion of the text for completeness let's also produce some aborts some errors so Going back to node number three, let's try to read an index that doesn't exist. So something like two, three, four, five, say OK. And if I now hit on read, then we'll get already a can open magic ultimate pop up window here showing us that an error occurred. And down here in the trace, we can see the answer is SDO abort by the server, general error for this entry. And another one we can try is we try to address a node that doesn't exist on the network. So I'm now addressing node number nine. What happens then? On a read, we get a client abort, the protocol timeout. And we can see here the SDO abort this time is not from the server, but it's from the client and it's a timeout. Reviewing the different can open and can open FD communication methods, we can say that the difference between a can open PDO and a can open FD PDO are primarily the size. So um, a can open FD variant of a PDO can have up to 64 bytes, whereas a can open PDO is limited to 8 bytes. Other than that, PDOs are always multicast. So the devices producing them just fire them off and it's up to the receivers to decide if they want to receive those or not so that's a multicast a one to n relation and in regards to the triggering pdos can not only be triggered by the application there can also be various automated triggers change of state time sync and sync with a counter the can open SDO is a confirmed one to one communication method. It can do segmentation when needed, limited to four bytes of data when doing an expedited, so a single request and response. And the biggest limitation here is that really the channels available and can open are limited. So per default, there's only one SDO client for all nodes so only one device can be um, a manager that communicates to all others with some extra effort there we can work around this issue but the default is that it's only one and last the can open fd universal sdo brings everything together it offers one-to-one -one as one-to-many communication and the client can also be done by any node. So here truly every can open node in the system can issue SDOs or universal SDOs to every other node in the system, allowing to implement a very powerful communication exchange method here.